How's everybody doing this morning? I hope everybody is doing just fine. I know that God has been blessing you through the week. I know that God bless you every day. And you got to give him some praise and thank him this morning. You ought to thank him for taking you through another week. You ought to thank him for strengthening you and making you more powerful so that you don't let sin have control of your mind, of your heart, of your actions, because you are victorious in Jesus Christ. And you can't overcome sin. I know sometimes you think you can't, but I want you to know today that you can overcome sin. Sin does not have to rule in your life no more. Evil thinking don't have to rule in your mind no more because you are victorious in Christ Jesus. I want you to know that. So today, before I get started, I want to give some honor to God. I want to thank you, God. I want you to know, God, that I love you, God. I want to give honor to his son, Jesus Christ. I want to thank you, Jesus. I want you to know that I love you, Jesus. I want to give honor to his Holy Spirit that now dwells in me. And I want to thank you for that Holy Spirit that you have now placed in me, which is your nature, which is your mind, and which is your heart that now dwells in me, that was able to transform me from what I used to be. And I want you to know that that same Spirit that's in me, that's in you, transform you as well. It, it works on your mind and in your heart. It works on your inner man so that you can be right with God so you won't have to worry about condemnation, you understand? And you don't have to be filthy no more. You know, you don't have to be raggedy no more. You can be good now because, you, because now you can overcome sin. How do you overcome sin? I want you to know that. Sin don't have no power over you anymore. But you got to believe that. You got to receive that in your heart. You got to receive it deep down inside of you that sin don't have no power over you anymore. And that you've been delivered and you've been set free by the power of God that lies in his son, Jesus Christ. You understand, because when you get with Jesus, you got to understand, you get the Holy Spirit in you. When you really receive Jesus by faith, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit come dwell in you, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus. The nature of God is inside of you now, and let that nature work. Let that nature work. That's why he tell us to put on the mind of Christ. See, Christ overcame sin, and if we operate out the same mind as Christ operate, we can overcome sin too, but we have to put our faith in Jesus Christ so, so we can receive the Holy Spirit, so the Holy Spirit can now work in our life. and We're not stuck where we, where we used to be anymore. We have moved on. We have moved on from our past. See, old things has passed away. All things has become new in the name of Jesus. You're not who you used to be and know that. And know that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That is in the world. So the title, so the title of my message today is How to Overcome the Power of Sin. How to overcome the power of sin. I'm going to, do you want to overcome the power of sin? So I'm going to give you a few things that I know that work. If you believe in it and receive it and apply it in your life, and you will find yourself overcoming the power of sin. You will come to know that sin doesn't have power over you no more. And you will grow and that power to overcome the power to to overcome sin to overcome the power of sin you eliminate that power of sin that sin will not have no more power over you in the name of jesus you are blessed more than you could think or imagine but you know i'm gonna come out of romans 8 and i'm gonna do verses 1 through 14 
I probably won't be with you too long. It might be a real short message, but it's going to be a blessed message. But first of all, I want you to know something. See, I want you to understand Romans 7. Romans 7, 14. Romans 7, 14 through 24. I'm not going to read it today. But it talk about the struggle of sin or the struggle with sin because of the law. See, first of all, you need to know that the law can't save you. First thing you need to know, the law can't deliver you, even though the law is holy. The, the law is revealed to you that you have sin. The law revealed to you that you have sin and you need to be delivered from sin. The law revealed to you that you struggle with sin. That's why Paul said, when I find myself wanting to do what's right, I find myself doing what's wrong. Why? Because sin is always present. He said evil is always present, but sin is always present. That's why he do wrong. But he also, but as you read through there, you will find out he goes on to tell you that I'm going to read that to you. He goes on to tell you that you can overcome the power of sin. Paul came to let you know that you can overcome the power of sin. So he worked it out real good. First, he lets you know that you're struggling with sin or you're struggling with evil and you want to do right, but you find yourself doing wrong. He said the reason why you find yourself going wrong because you find that evil is always present. So we need something to defeat that evil that's always present. We need to find what it takes to defeat that evil that's always present. And I want you to know it comes through Jesus Christ. It comes through believing and receiving Jesus Christ in your life and making him the master of your life. So you make him the authority of your life. And when somebody is your master, that means you be obedient to them and that means you follow them and you listen to them while they teach you because he's your master. You understand? He's your Lord. He's there for you. He's there to assist you through the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you. That's why he died on the cross and shed his blood for the forgiveness of sin. He was raised again by the heavenly father. You understand? He went to his right hand and sitting on his right hand on his throne right now. And because of that, he was able to release the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can indwell in us so that we can have power to overcome the power of sin. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. That's your savior. That's your deliverance. That's your strength. That's your hope and that's your confidence. Understand the word of God. Understand the purpose of God. Understand the purpose of God's word. And it is to help you overcome the power of sin. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. So go with me to Romans 7 first. I'm going to read verses 24 and 25. And this is what it said in verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of this death? So otherwise he's saying, this body is all messed up. Everything about it is all messed up. All these fleshly things are messed up. This worldly body is all messed up. So who's going to deliver me from this worldly body? Who's going to deliver me from this worldly Bible body that would lead me to death. He said, who would deliver me so I can overcome the power of sin, so I can overcome the struggle I am, so that I can have power over sin, so I can have power over uh, uh, evil. Who's going to deliver me from that? Then he goes on to say, I thank God 
Whoa, did you hear that? He said, <clears throat> I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I thank God through Jesus, I, Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Did you hear that? He said with the mind. He talking about his inner man. With the mind, he served the Lord. He said with his mind, he served the Lord. So otherwise, you got to get your mind right. And you get your mind right by studying the word of God. And then you start applying the word of God in your life. And I'm going to talk New Testament because I'm talking transformation. I'm talking about spiritual living. See, in the Old Testament, you couldn't get to spiritual living because grace wasn't present. Jesus Christ hadn't died. The Spirit couldn't indwell in you. So they was fighting the law with their flesh. But today, we get Jesus Christ to help us overcome it through the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in us. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. The mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he said, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he said, otherwise, I got to figure a way how to kill this flesh. I got to figure a way how to let this sinful nature have power over me no more. He already knew that he's got to turn his life over to Christ. Because he have done it. But he already know. Now he's letting us know that we can be delivered from it too. If we're willing to serve the Lord with our mind. Are you willing to give God your mind? Are you willing to give God your mind? Are you willing to give God your heart? Are you willing to give God your all, your inner man, so that he can work in you through his nature that's now in you by the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you? Is you ready to do that? Are you really ready to do that? Some of you come to him. You still come to him with the flesh. Oh, yes. You still come to him with the flesh because you don't come to him with your mind. You don't come to him willing to give your mind over to him. You don't come to him to receive in your minds the things that he got for you in his word. Not in your mind, but in your flesh. But you got to get out of the flesh and get in the spirit. And the spirit is in your mind. So you got to let Jesus Christ Come reside in your mind. He tell us, put on the mind of Christ. Put on the mind of Christ. Jesus Christ overcame the power of sin. And we are followers of Jesus Christ. He's letting us know that we can overcome the power of sin as well. Through him. Through putting our faith in him. Putting our faith in in our Savior, giving our mind to our Savior, giving our spiritual heart to our Savior, giving everything we got to Him, to turn our inner man over, to turn our spirit man over, and let the Spirit of God have His way in our life today. He said that. He said, uh, Oh, that, not your man that I am who should deliver me from the body of this death. Who should deliver me from the body of this death? Then he said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. But with the flesh the law of sin. So otherwise you would do what sin wants you to do. But with the mind. But with the mind, and then you would do what God wants you to do when you serve God with your mind, when you turn your mind over to God. Yes, you have to turn your mind over to Jesus. Yes, then it goes on to say, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, to them who are in Christ Jesus. So if you don't want no condemnation, if you don't want this condemned body to have power over you, 
<laughs> then you must turn yourself over to Christ Jesus. No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So you got to turn yourself over to Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, who walk not after his sinful nature, him that do not obey his sinful nature, him that turns away and walk away from his sinful nature. You understand that? God, after the flesh, but after the spirit, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But now, you turn your mind over to the Spirit of God. So you let the Spirit of God have its way in your life. That you receive the day that you got saved. And now you got to grow in the Spirit. <laughs> Did you hear me? You got to grow in the Spirit that now dwells in you. And you got to mortify your flesh in the name of Jesus. You got to mortify it the deeds of sin by living in the spirit and how do you live in the spirit by following the new testament by by following the new testament he said continue in my words because god's words are spirit god's words are spirit the old testament is the law and with the law you could not receive the spirit but with Jesus Christ, you can receive the Spirit of God to dwell in you. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. You want your freedom? You want to be free from the law of sin and death? You got to get with Jesus. You got to make Jesus Christ your Savior. You got to follow Jesus. You got to do what the Word of God say do. You got to believe and receive and let Jesus have his way in your life through his Spirit. Through his Spirit. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Condemn sin in the flesh. Destroy sin in the flesh. So there's only one way that I know that you can destroy sin in the flesh. You, believe, you got to believe in Jesus Christ. You got to follow Jesus Christ. You got to follow Jesus Christ so that you can live in the Spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit that's now in you. It says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. <laughs> Do you believe that? Do you have the Spirit of God in you? Because that's where the greatness is at. The greatness is in the spirit that now dwells in you. And that's how you become great. And that's how you overcome the power of sin. And that's how you overcome the power of sin. I'm here to tell you, you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it on self-will. You can't do it on self-work. You got to do it through the work of God. You got to do it through the work of the Holy Spirit that now dwell in you. You got to humble to that spirit. You got to submit to that spirit. You got to be obedient to that spirit. You got to let that spirit have its way in your mind. You got to meditate on that spirit. You got to let that spirit work. You got to believe in the word of God because the word of God is spirit. Jesus said, he told her, you must worship him in spirit and truth. He said, in spirit and truth. He said, in spirit and truth. And when you do that, you will be, you will be putting on the mind of Christ and you will be reestablishing your mind to walk in the spirit. Then he said, condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, that the righteousness of the law, see, remember I told you that the law was righteous. So now, so now the righteousness of the law can indwell in us through the Holy Spirit. 
The righteousness of the law can dwell in us by the Holy Spirit. But in the old days, but in the old covenant, the righteousness of the law could not dwell in us because Jesus had indeed what needed to be done in order for the Holy Spirit to live in us so that the righteousness of the law can dwell in us. And when you got the righteousness of the law indwelling in you, and you being obedient to the righteousness of the law that's in your nature now, that's in your heart now, that's in your mind now, you will have the power to overcome sin. You will have the power to overcome sin. Then he goes on to say that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, you got to turn away from that sinful nature. You got to put that sinful nature behind you. And you got to start looking at Jesus. You got to keep your focus on Jesus. You got to keep your focus on Jesus. You got to keep your focus on the Holy Spirit. You got to keep your focus on God. You got to keep your focus on God's word. You got to let it have its way in you. Don't lose your focus so that you can walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. So you can cast down them negative imagination, them, them, them sinful imagination. If you get your focus on Christ Jesus, if you get your focus on the spirit, because then you will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. <laughs> For they that are after the flesh, now dig this, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Let me read that to you again. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the, of the flesh. That means the people that's of the flesh, the people that's of the world, the people that's about sinning, that's what they think on, and that's what they do. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. But them that is after the Spirit, them that's following the Spirit, they have their minds set on the Spirit to do the things of the Spirit. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. So otherwise, it got, it's dealing with that mindset again. That's why he tells us to renew our mind. You got to cast it out. So then you got your mind on the Spirit instead of your mind on your sinful nature. You got your mind on the spirit. And if you got your mind on the spirit, that will destroy your sinful nature and you will start walking in the righteousness of God through the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. So he said to be worldly minded is death. That means you're going to be totally separated from God and you're on your way to eternal damnation. That's all that's mean. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. But to be spiritual minded, you can have life and peace. But you got to be spiritual minded. To be spiritual minded, you got to have a mind on God. You got to have a mind on Jesus. You got to have the mind on God's holy words. You got to have your mind on the spirit of God. You got to have your mind on the fruits of the spirit. You got to have your mind on the word of God. And when you do that, you can have life and peace. Because when you do that, not only are you going to have life, you're going to have life in peace now as you're growing, and you're going to have eternal life in peace with the Father and the Son on the new heaven, in the new earth, in the new Jerusalem. Bless their wonderful name, Jesus. Because the cardinal mind is enemy against God. See, the cardinal mind, the world mind, the sinful mind is an enemy with God. It, it can't even be in harmony with God. It goes against God. So if you're living in the enemy mind and you call yourself serving God and you wonder why you keep doing that enemy stuff that goes against God, because your mind ain't right. Because your mind is not on the spirit. Your mind is on your sinful nature. That's a wonderful name. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither there deep. Ne neither there, neither indeed can be. Neither there can be. So you got to get rid of that worldly mind. If you want to be with God, if you want to overcome the power of sin, 
You got to have a mind set on Jesus. You can't have a mind set on the world. You can't have a mind set on sinning. You can't have a mind set on the flesh. You got to have your mind set on the righteousness and the wisdom of God. You got to have your mind set on Jesus. You got to have a mind set for God. You got to have a mind set to be obedient to God's word. You got to have a mind set to want to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. And when I'm saying walking in the spirit, you understand, I'm talking about talk, walking in the ways that God wants you to walk through the power of the Holy Spirit that now dwells in you, instead of walking the way that you've been walking, walking in according to the world and according to your sinful nature. And according to your sinful nature, you got to let it go. You know, you got to let it go. You got to let it go. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you want to please God? Do you want to please God? Can you live for God? Can you live to please God? And there's only one way you can do it. You got to walk in the Spirit. You got to live in the Spirit. If you want to please God. But the question is, do you want to please God? It's the question you got to ask yourself. Or do you just want God to bless you? You just want God's blessing? Or do you want to please God? Or do you want to please God? I choose the day and I chose a long time ago to live a life that's pleasing only God and not unto myself. And the thing about it that makes it so good, even when I fought that God picks me up so I can live a life pleasing only Him through His Spirit. He gets my mind back on the right track and I just follow that Spirit. And I just let that spirit lead me. And I just let that spirit guide me. I think like the word of God. Because I think like the word of God. I act like the word of God. Because my spirit is set in the mind of God. My heart is for the mind of God. I want to love God. I want to please God. I want to live for God. I want God's acceptance. I want God's approval. So I live to please God. I love God, but I want you to know one thing. God loved me first. God sent his son to die on the cross for me. I want you to know he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that you don't have to live by your sinful nature, but now you can live by the holy nature that he has given you by his spirit that now dwell in you by faith uh, in his son, Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. And then as you grow and you walk in the spirit, you will find ways. He will give you ways. He will make you more than a conqueror to overcome sin. He will make you more than a conqueror to overcome sin. This is God's grace working inside of you. And that spirit is a part of God's grace. That's working inside of you. That's working inside again. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now let me break this verse down. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So understand this. You get out of that fleshly world. You get out of that sinful world. And you jump over to God's world. And you stay in God's world so that you can live in the spirit. When you're living in God's world, then you're living in the spirit. When you're living in the flesh world, then you're not living in the spirit. You're living in the flesh. You're living in your sinful nature. But if you want to live in that holy nature, then you got to keep your mind on God's world. And you got to let that spirit of God work in your life. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus, for making it happen. You understand? And then it goes on to say, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now you know you got the Spirit of God's grace. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you don't have the Spirit of Christ dwelling in you, I want you to know that you doesn't even belong to God. 
you don't even belong to Jesus if you don't have the spirit. So you got to believe in the spiritual birth. You got to believe in being born again by the spirit of God in order for the spirit to be in you. In order for the spirit to be in you. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. He said, but if Christ be in you, this physical body is dead because of sin. This sinful nature is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. I'm talking about God righteousness that comes through his son, Jesus Christ. And when you get that, then your spirit is life. And you won't live in death any longer, but you will live in life. Experience the abundant life that Jesus Christ had for you. And he said, I give you abundant life. He said, the devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that you may have life. Woo! And that you may have it more abundantly. That's what Jesus told us. And I believe in that abundant life. And you get that life when you're walking in the spirit. You live in that that abundant life when you're living in the spirit. Because when you get out of the spirit and you let your fleshly guide you, if it ain't but for a second, you'll feel things starting to get badly. You don't feel good. You feel depressed. You feel stressed out. All these other things bothering you. Sometimes you feel like doing the wrong thing because everything is just messed up. But blah, blah, blah. when you decide to get out of that flesh, Get out of that sinful nature and get in that holy nature that you get through the Spirit and God and then you feel your joy come back, you feel your peace come back because now you're living an abundant life that comes through Jesus Christ by walking in the Spirit, by living in the Spirit. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwells in you. So he said he will give life to your mortal body. He said he will give life to your flesh. He said he will make the difference if you got the spirit dwelling in you. If you got the spirit dwelling in you. Because when you got the spirit dwelling in you, you will walk in the spirit. When you know that you got the spirit dwelling in you, you will walk over the sin. You will walk in the spirit and you will have the power to overcome sin. And you will overcome the power of sin. It's guaranteed you will overcome the power of sin. Sin will no longer have control of you. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. But at that spirit of him, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. So he said, quicken that means he will give life to your mortal body. So that your mortal body can live in righteousness now. So your mortal body will be obedience to the spirit of righteousness. And because of that, he will give life to it. And uh, <laughs> you will have power over sin. You will overcome the power of sin. You will overcome the power of sin. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Through the Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body. Through the Spirit, mortify the deeds of the body. Through the Spirit, kills the deeds of the body. Through the Spirit, destroys the deeds of the body. Destroy that sinful nature. Destroy that sinful nature. Destroy that sinful nature. You understand? You will destroy that sinful nature. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But, but if ye, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live, and you will have life, and you will have life, and you will have it more abundantly. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the child of God. And when you are led by the Spirit of God, I want you to know that you are the child of God. When you're led by the Spirit of God. This was just a good thing to bring to you this morning. To let you know that you can overcome the power of sin. That you can overcome the power of sin. So I'm just telling you, you can overcome the power of sin. 
or you have overcome the power of sin. You got to receive it. Then you got to live in it. But you got to get your mind right. You got to get your mind right. And you get your mind right in the word of God. You read, read uh, John. Read St. John. Understand it. Get that foundation in St. John. And you will overcome the power of sin. Romans 7. Roman, read Romans 8. Romans 7 tells you about the struggles that you have in the flesh. But it's not telling you that you got to stay there. That's why he said at the end, who should deliver me from this body? He said, thank God for my Lord Jesus Christ. And then Romans 8, he tell you how to overcome the power of sin by walking in the spirit. And not walking in the flesh. That you must have the mind of the spirit and not the mind of the flesh. You understand? So I hope this message touched you and I hope it bless you. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, today is a good day to start believing in him. Today is a good day to put your faith in him. And I got to talk to you like that. I'm not going to talk about no prayer right now. I'm going to talk about faith. You understand? Because you can pray all day long. But if you ain't got faith in Jesus Christ, that prayer is in vain. But when you got faith in Jesus Christ and you believe that Jesus Christ can save you and has delivered you, then you are saved. By faith, you are saved. Not by words of prayer. But by faith, you are saved by receiving him inside of you through his Holy Spirit that now dwells in you. And you can say, thank you, Jesus. I'm saved. Because now today, I'm going to follow Jesus. Today, I'm going to put my confidence and trust in Jesus. Today, I'm not turning away no more. I'm just going to continue to study this word of God. And I'm going to follow Jesus. And I'm going to live by this word the best I can. But then I know I got the Holy Spirit that's going to help me. So today, I'm going to walk in the Spirit. Today, I'm going to walk in the Spirit. I'm not going to let the flesh have its way in me no more. I'm not going to let sin have its way in me no more because I've been delivered by Jesus because I've been set free by Jesus. If I continue to live in the Spirit, I will continue to be blessed. If I continue to live in the Spirit, I will continue to gain more freedom. If I continue to live in the Spirit, oh, Shadakapaka, I want you to know that I'm free. And I'm free at last because I live in the Spirit. And I have overcome the power of sin by walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in them today. Let your spirit work in them today. Let your spirit bless them today. Let your spirit take care of them today. Let their mind be renewed in you, Jesus. Through your spirit, let it have its way in their mind and in their heart. Let them be touched. Let them be blessed in the name of Jesus. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shadakapaka, walk in the spirit today. Get out of the flesh. Live pleasing on the God. And the only way you can live pleasing on the God is you got to walk in the spirit. You got to walk in the spirit. And the spirit will teach you all everything you need to know. The spirit will direct you in the right way. The spirit will lead you to do the right thing. Because that Holy Spirit ain't no joke. I thank God for that spirit every day that now dwells in me. I thank him for the new nature that I have inside of me now. Ooh, Shadakapaka, I got so much peace. I got so much joy. I got so much comfort. I got so much love. I look out for others all because of what Jesus done. And now that I live in the spirit, <laughs> instead of in that sinful nature, instead of in my selfishness, I've been delivered from all of that. And I thank God for that because only God made it happen through his son, Jesus Christ. But you got to walk in the spirit. 
You got to live in the spirit. You got to have a mindset for the spirit. Bless that wonderful name, Jesus. And I'm going to get ready to go. I hope this message touched you. I hope this message bless you. You can find me on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Go to my channel, Thomas Patterson. I do a little Twitter too. You can even see me on Twitter. Check me out on Twitter. You understand and you know my main thing is Facebook huh? because that's what I do. That's what God assigned me to do to bring these words to you and I'm going to bring them to you. In the name of Jesus, be blessed all the time and forever and have a lovely week.